let's check in and see how some of them are doing, maybe. Jason? Hey. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Sorry to surprise you. Come over. Oh, so this doing? is... Jason Schroeder from South Park, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I'm very excited for Ubisoft's games. Yeah. So you guys uh, had an amazing uh, conference last year. What can we expect this year? Uh, for South Park this year, it's all about the boot. Booth. We're doing hands-on tin pods at the booth. Uh, And we're taking people through the first night of them as a superhero. Very cool. So I heard that this uh, demo has an interesting club experience. So the whole editorial team has been flying around the world, going to every strip club. They keep sending me reference. <laughs> Uh, you guys can making stop it, making it rain for immersive games. I got it. I, we have enough reference now. Please stop sending those pictures. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So, Dan, you had an announce last week for Far Cry 5. That went great. Yeah. Um, one of the things I've noticed is that every time you go out on stage, you look super calm. Does it get easier year after year? No. <laughs> Not even a little. I'm dying on the inside, dude. I think we're all definitely yeah. feeling the nerves, even all of us here backstage. So a lot of people work on Far Cry. Is there anything that you'd like to say to all the teams here in the theater, maybe? And thank you. We've always wondered what could happen if our crazy rabbits were unleashed upon the world of Mario. Today, the dream is reality. And to talk about this unexpected encounter, it is my great honor to welcome a very special guest, someone I truly admire. Please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miyamoto-san. For coming. Thank you, We are so happy to have you today. So what what have you brought oh, with you? Well, what did you bring? <laughs> this is a life-size replica of uh -huh. one of the weapons from this game. Wow. 
Cool, I'm sure you love it. I brought one. For you. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> ah. So. He can have yeah. our conversation. Okay. Is there a little bit different from the weapons you see in Ghost Recon? <laughs> yeah, very different weapons for cute. very different worlds. Uh, <laughs> this one is, I think, very effective in the, the world of Myron Rabbit. So, should do well. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so proud of Ubisoft's long-standing collaboration with Nintendo. You know, from the DS to the Wii, and uh, more recently for the impressive launch of the Switch, you know, it has always been, we have always been inspired by Nintendo and by all the great work you have been able to do. So, Yes, thank you very much for all the work that we've been able to do together over the years with Ubisoft. I mean, Eves, it's already been about 25 years since you and I first met. And every year at E3, you're kind enough to invite me to your booth, and we get to take lots of pictures and videos, and I've even recorded messages for Ubisoft employees in the past. <laughs> so over the years, I've always felt the deep, heartfelt passion that Ubisoft developers have for Nintendo and its characters. But on the other hand, uh, because we're both software developers, we've also looked at each other as kind of yeah. rivals and, and sure. tried to see who could make the best software. <laughs> but of course, I've known the Rabbids characters for many years, and I have many Rabbids figures uh, decorating my desk. Wow. Um, and so okay. I've always been a fan of the characters and their humor. Uh, so since this project first started, I've been very excited to see what kind of humor the rabbits could bring to the Mario world. <laughs> so when I met uh, Davide-san, who is the uh, creative director of this game... <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, when, I, when I met Davide-san, I had just, just one condition for this project. I said, whatever you do, don't try to make a, a jump game or a Mario platformer. Try to make a Mario game that has never been made before. <laughs> and it's great. And I can tell you, it was an exciting, very uh, exciting challenge for all our teams. And I think we've done something you will love. So thank you very much for giving us the chance to, to perform on this game. <laughs> And so, of course, because the, the game is being made in Europe, it has a very unique flavor to it. Um, and of course, Ubisoft is very good at making action games, uh, but this game in particular has a great layer of strategy and tactics to it, uh, but with a very good pace. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be fresh, actually. Uh, so now let's welcome Xavier, you know, the, the producer of the game, and he will show us the game. So thanks again. Thanks again, Miyamoto. Thank 
Finally, finally we can talk about this project. <laughs> so we've been working on this game for more than three years now, and uh, to be at E3 today on this stage is just uh, super exciting. So what is this game exactly? So Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is a tactical adventure exclusive for the Nintendo Switch, and let's check right away some gameplay. So the rabbits have been teleported into the, uh, the Mushroom Kingdom, and it made the world completely unstable and chaotic. So Mario, as a true hero, wants to save the day. But this time, with some new friends. And at first, they don't really know each other, but in the end, they will form this uh, dream team that will potentially save the Mushroom Kingdom. And as the game is a turn-based tactical adventure game, uh, combat is a really big part of the concept. Um, so you'll fight wave after wave of rabbit that somehow turn bad. And uh, what we see here is just uh, the very beginning of the game, so it will be perfect to talk about the combat basics. Uh, so the two flags you see on the screen here is to tell you that this is a battlefield zone. So you'll switch from exploration mode to battle mode. The blue zone is your zone of movement, so you move anywhere you want in that zone. But you can also use battlefield ingredients, such as uh, covers for protection. So Rabbit Luigi here using half cover or full cover. And uh, we also have what we call team jump. So by jumping on your teammates, you can expand your zone of movement. So here, Rabbit Peach using Mario, she's able to flank the enemy. So you can also attack the enemy behind that cover and expose them by destroying that cover, um, which is really interesting in terms of strategy because uh, for the next turns, you will be open for uh, attacks. And last but not least, techniques. So from defensive ones like uh, Rabbit Peach shield boost or offensive ones like Mario's Hero Sight, he's able to attack the enemy even if it's not his turn as soon as the enemy moves. So this is the very core aspect of the game itself. So you mix and match attack options, movement abilities, techniques. But we also have um, other ingredients, such as uh, pipes, rabbit pipes. So those give you uh, a good move to uh, flank the enemy. So here, for example, Rabbit Luigi goes into the pipe, out of the pipe, dash the enemy, goes for Mario, team jump, land behind the enemy in one single movement sequence and then finish off the enemy. And what we see uh, here is actually uh, explosive cover. So those have many type of uh, super effects, and this one was a push effect. So you can push heroes or enemies out of the uh, boundaries. So again, this is just a glimpse into the basics of the game. And as you progress into the game, uh, you have more tactic tools. You'll be able to do more combo setups. You'll be able to use different type of heroes, different type of weapons, in order to battle your way through uh, the kingdom.
you. Thank you. And that's, and that's just a, a glimpse into the game itself. But um, first and foremost, this is a project done with passion, with our hearts. So it would not exist otherwise. So we just can't wait for you guys to try the game at E3 this week. Uh, for those who are not at E3, you'll see online coverage, videos, and surprises. So have a great conference. Have a great E3. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ashraf Ismail, game director for Assassin's Creed Origins. I've waited a long time to say that. <laughs> Almost 10 years ago, I, as many of you, fell in love with a game. That game took us to the Third Crusade. And we fell in love again when it took us to the Italian Renaissance. Over the years, this amazing series has taken us to the American Revolution, the French Revolution, Victorian London, and of course, to the Republic of Pirates. For the 10-year anniversary of Assassin's Creed, for our fans, for ourselves, and for all newcomers, we wanted to go back, very far back, to show how it all began. Since Black Flag, over the last three and a half years, we have poured our energy, our talent, our passion, into bringing the land of pyramids, pharaohs, and mummies to life, to bring ancient Egypt to life. Now, Egypt challenged us. It fundamentally challenged us to reinvent what it means to be Assassin's Creed. And over the next few days, you will see, play, and feel this reinvented experience. I am deeply honored and proud to be here representing the amazing work of a phenomenal team. And thrilled to finally be able to show you this beast we have been building. Without further ado, here is a taste of Egypt.
Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as an extra treat, let's check in with home base where we're going to get a glimpse of what you'll see right after the UB conference. Hey there, folks. Chris Waters here at the home base with Hanny Duong and Carl Lua, producer on Assassin's Creed Origins at Ubisoft Singapore. Uh, Carl's here to give us a look at the gameplay of the game. We're going to be entering the open world. We've got a ton more to show you, but Carl, kick it off. Give us a little taste here. Yeah, so here we are in the open world of, of Egypt. This is the demo that we will be showing on the, the show floor here at E3. Bayek is riding into the Fayoum, one of the, the regions in Egypt, this most southernmost region. It's a, a beautiful area. We see we've come in from the desert, moving Ooh. towards this uh, Lake Morris. And uh, let's have a little exploration around here using our eagle scene. It's sunny on the lake and it's sunny on the monitor here, but folks, this looks really good. It's running on an Xbox One X. It will be giving you the gameplay feed after the show. We've got 30 minutes of that coming up, but uh, let's see if we can see from a bird's eye view what Senu is up to. Yeah, so Senu is uh, looking into this military camp and tagging a few enemies here. After, after the show, we will infiltrate this camp and take it out either through stealth or combat or perhaps ranged weaponry. All right, if you guys want to see more of this, be sure to tune in right after the conference. Chris and I and Carl here will be right here. Ash will be joining us as well. You won't want to miss it. That 30 minutes live gameplay feed is coming up after the show, but for now, it's back to the stage and on with the excitement. That's it for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So. Don't forget that you can watch this demo in its entirety after the conference uh, live stream from our home base. And for those of you here at E3, please come to the Ubisoft booth where you can live this new experience of Assassin's Creed. Thank you very much. dominate off-road racing on his way to the top. <laughs>
our champion swords around it brilliantly. Now that's the skill that wins no matter what the engine, no matter what the track. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two years back, the crew took the driving genre out there to the big, wide, open world of the USA. Thanks to our players, we have taken this iconic vision to the next level. They showed us what they liked and what they wanted to see in the future. Now, it's time to take it way beyond driving. I am Stéphane Bellet, Creative Director. This is The Crew 2. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Here in the US, motorsports are louder, bigger, agier than anywhere else the world. Drivers and fans meet across the country and celebrate a common passion for all things motorized. Now's your chance to join in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Crew 2, home of Mother Nation. Part of the city, street racers prove their skills, skidding on rooftops, burning asphalt, and tuning their ride. Off-road through the striking beauty of nature. Tame, unpredictable waves on the open ocean, rapid waters, or narrow rivers.
fearless pilot rules the skies, spin between buildings, through the clouds, among stunning, stunning perspectives. Thank you. All across the country, I octane contests await you. Take the lead on modernation. You've had a glimpse of the crew too. Register now for beta access or play the demo at the booth. Experience TC2 for yourself. Enjoy the ride. Thank you. We all started as one team. We all wanted to be superheroes for the same reason. So you're a traitor, Tweak, and now you're with a group of super traitors. This was started by you. We aren't the ones who walked out of the fucking franchise, Mysterion. Why would the Freedom Pals help us? We send a spy, someone in our group who pretends to want to switch sides and join Freedom Pals. Somebody who they don't know very well. All this fair and love and war, freedom pussies. You fucking animal. You've got problems, new kid. Whatever you did last night got a lot of people's attention. Bad people. If you need information, just know you can rely on... Call Girl. Who the fuck is that? So I guess now any fucking asshole thinks they can be a superhero. We're gonna rip you apart. Dude, Mysterion is pissed at you, new kid. Toolshed. Toolshed is a catchy tier class visionary archetype. And a butt fucking traitor. Eric, you must listen to me. Get out of my head, Timmy. Your franchise is going nowhere. Face the truth, Eric. You guys are kind of douchebags. He just called us douchebags in my mind. He did? South Park, the fractured butt home. <laughs> Available October 17th. There was this sort of synergy of, well, we're looking to do something interesting in VR, and we've got this division, and you're looking to sort of bring, you know, what sense you have of storytelling within, and put that into the context of VR. You can, for the first time as a player, feel like you are in a movie. That's a really good word for it. We want you to take off the gear and still feel unsettled. Whilst working with Ubisoft, we stumbled across some fascinating research that had begun in the late 90s. Essentially, neuroscientists had figured out a way to upload brain data, trauma, emo emo emotions, memories, to the digital space. Now, we've gone and taken the next logical step, and with Ubisoft, we've, we've recreated in virtual reality one such test of 
So we'd like you to come and join us and experience the Walter Test Case for yourself. Not as we don't want to. Again. Experiencing is a recorded consciousness. It's not like watching a movie. So no matter how real it may seem, it can't hurt you. You are completely safe. You are completely safe. And now, I'm happy to share a new surprise with you. Building on the legacy of one of our most popular worlds, the super talented teams of Ubisoft Singapore came up with something really, really unique. So I want you to see that and enjoy. Thank you. Men from all over the world sail the treacherous trade routes of the Indian Ocean. The riches in their holds fuel their dreams of power and fortune, while whetting the appetites of those they fear most. Pirates. One hundred twenty days. That's how long the average pirate survived a lawless life on the seas during the golden age of piracy. I'm Justin Fair, and the creative director for Skull and Bones. 
And this is your chance to not just survive, but to climb the food chain and surpass the legend of every pirate who ever sailed the high seas. Since bringing innovative naval combat to Assassin's Creed, we at Ubisoft Singapore have set out to bring you the ultimate pirate experience. A tactical action game where we take that naval combat to the next level, mastering the ocean and its winds at the helm of ships armed to the teeth. Skull and Bones takes place in a shared systemic world where you can sail solo or form a gang of pirates with your friends and together terrorize the trade routes of the Indian Ocean. Season after season, you'll collaborate and compete with other bloodthirsty players, even execute ruthless betrayals in order to become the ultimate pirate kingpin. Now I'm proud to share with you the loot hunt one of Skull and Bones' five versus five team-based PvP modes. Yeah. Right on, right? Yeah. We've just received intel that merchant convoys rich with treasure are sailing just off the coast of Madagascar. But beware, there are other pirates also looking to plunder the PvP-disputed waters of the Indian Ocean. The Priscilla's shallows of Madagascar, located on the cusp of a bustling trade route, it is the perfect place for an ambush. Here is our gang of pirates, the Raiders, going head to head with a gang of rival players, the Cutthroats. Victory goes to the team with the most loot at the end of the hunt. Knowing how to sail with the wind is a pirate's most precious skill. Use the winds to increase your speed or to position yourself for tactical advantage in battle. To reap the most rewards, it is best to split up, some going inland, others keeping to the open sea. Each warship has unique strengths. The frigate's hull is reinforced, its arsenal equipped with numerous culverin cannons. The Brigantine is devastating up close, with a battering ram designed to break any resistance. The Sloop of War kills from afar, with its crippling long-ranged mortars and precise long nine cannons. Don't let bloodlust cloud your purpose. You're here for the loot, and so are your rivals. Store the goods, then back to your station. The team that escapes with the most loot claims victory. Searching for more targets on the horizon, our sloop of war spots a rival pirate ship further inland. Heavily reinforced hull, our frigate swoops in to save the day, bearing the brunt of the damage. now taking aim at the frigate, and it will take team coordination to take her down. Fuego! That ship's badly damaged! They are killing! We can take their ship! With the enemy ship's broadside now vulnerable, our frigate rushes in to board her. No quarter! Silver. 
Betsy snorting some fish, this! <laughs> Pirate hunters have been sent in, signaling the end of the hunt. They target the pirates with the most stolen loot. Time to make our escape, Captain, or we are good for the news. They're firing more time. Full tilt, Silbo, full tilt. The pirate hunter defenses are so strong that the only option is escape. The brigantine is sacrificing herself to buy time for the frigate who carries the most loot. The frigate now needs to make its escape through the reefs. Captain, that's back for the reefs! Successful pirates know when to run, with their hulls full and the wind at their backs. Yeah! Thank you all very much. I'd like to invite you to play the Loot Hunt at the Ubisoft booth at E3. And please register for our live phases online. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, the world of Skull and Bones is one that evolves. When you act, it reacts. That if I did not kiss the girls, my lips would grow a moldy. Somebody, I 
I'm BB Rexa, and Just Dance 2018 is out this October on all consoles. Bye! You use it as a telephone. You use it as a camera. It's your music player, your flashlight, calculator, and GPS navigation device. But now, finally, the most high-tech company in the world has unlocked the mobile phone's true potential so that it can do what it was truly meant to do. We are playing Cowboys and Indians. Hey, new kid, we need you to come play with us. Put on some cowboy shit and meet us outside. And bring your phone! <laughs> whoa, whoa, we're playing Cowboys and Indians, dickhole. Inuits are technically Native Americans. This new kid puts me to shame. Tip <laughs> 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 Atlas, Jewel of the Pleiades. Nova took us to the stars. Each new world more incredible than the last. We had no idea what was waiting for us. The Legion. It consumes everything in its path. They've never used Starlink before. Go show them what it can do. Okay, let's do this. Come on, come on. I got it. Chase, how's it going? Breaking atmosphere. Fire loadout. We're up against impossible odds, but together we will adapt and overcome. Hi, I'm Matt Rose, producer at Ubisoft Toronto. Like many of you, I grew up in the 80s, obsessed with sci-fi, animation, comics, and of course, all the really cool toys. At Ubisoft Toronto, we built a team with a dream of bringing those amazing childhood memories back to life for a new generation. Starlink Battle for Atlas allows you to take control of a team of star pilots in a massive, open, living star system, fighting to save Atlas from the Forgotten Legion. Build your custom starship, and then adapt to new challenges on the fly. Link extra armor and heavy weapons to take on a huge Legion Prime. Search for ancient, ancient secrets lost on the worlds of Atlas, or outrun outlaws through an asteroid field. Freedom is at the core of Starlink Battle for Atlas. Collect your way with both physical Starship collectibles 
and digital versions available, and even take your game on the go using the power of Nintendo Switch. Visit StarlinkGame.com for more information and stay tuned for many more surprises over the coming months. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rebecca Coutaz. I'm the studio director at Ubisoft Annecy. It's a pleasure for me to be back on stage after our announcement at E3 last year. And we have had, uh, since then, a full year of support and continuous development of Steep. Since the very beginning of this project, we have been working with athletes, and we have always been impressed by their passion and dedication. We learned how one champion spent 300 days a year on a trampoline to practice for that perfect landing. We learned how others make more than six million turns to practice for the 15 they have to race in competition. These athletes, they travel to the world to train with the best, to compete with the strongest, and to challenge themselves with the most experienced and skilled coaches. It's truly a level of passion and dedication that goes well beyond our everyday lives. And when you talk to the very best of these men and women, you realize that there is something they always have in back of their minds at all times. It's a dream that takes years of preparation for just one go at that unforgettable moment. This December, with our first steep expansion, this is the journey you will take. Enjoy.
Hi, my name is Dan Hay, and I'm the executive producer of Far Cry The Brand, as well as the creative director of Far Cry 5. I'd like to introduce you to Hope County, Montana. Vast, beautiful, rugged. A place where people don't even lock their front door anymore. But that's how it used to be. Today, Hope County's been overrun by a fanatical cult. You find yourself trapped deep in cult territory, cut off from the rest of the world. They've closed the roads. There's no cell phone signal, no 911. People are fucking scared. I had to say it. And just up ahead, the small town of Falls End has been completely overrun. If you're going to survive, you and your guns for hire are going to need to save it. But to do that, well, you're going to need to raise some hell. We got piggies. Town looks like a war zone. Where do you want me? Water tower, got it. Where's your master? I don't deal with domesticated. Hey, the fuck? I ain't got no master, but I do have your little toy. Mm. Show me the idol. Show me the redeemer. Here you go, mate. Oh, hey, 
Gee. Yo, 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 hand it over. I got a hot date. Don't do late. <laughs> Monkey's got a date. <laughs> what? 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 That's Swiss fucking chocolate, pig. Bon appetito. I want every fucking cop in this fucking city after that fucking bastard! Grab my chassis, Noxy! about bloody time. Mm. Let's see what we've got. Moksha. Just as Yama described it. True freedom lies beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to all the teams who worked very, very, very hard on creating all, all this, all this world. Uh, again, thank you to all these, these teams behind us. I want also to say thank you to Eve, with all my heart. <laughs> Thanks, Eve, for making this happen. This is, this is just amazing. Uh, and also, a special thanks to the fans of Being Good and Evil for sticking with us for so long. It's about bloody time. 15 years, <laughs> almost. So welcome to System 3. Our story takes place before the birth of Jade, in a multi-ethnic, multicultural human society in a distant solar system. It is a time when corporations create hybrids in their labs and enslave them to colonize the stars in order to compete for power and cosmic resources with our crew of crazy and unforgettable characters, 
We fight in the name of freedom and the right to determine our own fate among the stars. And we will hail massive star-faring vessels through territories as spectacular as they are dangerous. We've been working very hard um, just on the technology during three years. And today, we have a seamless online playground where we can travel across space at the speed of light. We can explore mysterious cities and discover unknown lands by ourselves or with friends. And we want you to participate in the making of this great adventure. Join our Space Monkey program. <laughs> today, and help us make beyond good and evil a world that will challenge us and bring us together for thousand adventure, thrills and fun. And please, if just join, join us. us. This is Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations, you guys. You know, Gabriel and Michelle, you've done a fantastic job. It's amazing what uh, I've been, you have been able to achieve. And you and I, um, and all the teams, um, have the power of creating games that will amaze all the gamers. And I think video games can help us to grow and to get better. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now I would like to thank everyone here in the room and those who are watching us from home. Thank you for listening today and thank you for playing our games. So to all the teams at Ubisoft, Thank you for your incredible imagination and enthusiasm. All of us here, we wish you all a lot of fun playing games this year. So thank you very much and have a great E3. Okay, wait, look, most importantly, it's, Holy it's not over. The show is not over, folks. We're gonna send you back to the home base behind the theater. We have 30 minutes of an exclusive, what is it, I lost it. Assassin's Creed Origins exclusive gameplay. 30 minutes right now, let's go back to home base outside the theater. Thank you for watching. It's have not a great over, stay E3. tuned. Holy shit! Oh my God. Hey there, folks. What a show and what an ending, huh, guys? Wow. That Wonderful. was amazing. amazing. Fantastic. It was jam-packed with great games, and we've got more great games to show you right now, specifically Assassin's Creed Origins. I'm Chris Waters, joined by Hanny Duong, What's Carl up, Lua, and Ash Ismail hey. from the Assassin's Creed Origins team. And uh, let's get right into it, fellas, here. Without further ado, we've got 30 minutes of exploring the open world in Assassin's yes. Creed Origins. Yes, for sure. Um, so just to start off, so, so we have the context. This is the, the demo we have uh, here at E3 uh, that we're letting people play. Um, just so everyone knows, this is, uh, this is a living game. We still have a ways to go uh, to finish off the game and completely polish it, so we might see some hiccups uh, along the way. But we fully assume that. We're super proud to be here to show it off. Uh, we've been working a long time on this, and, and it's finally exciting to, to be able to, to show it and have people play it and send us feedback. So, so here we're going to go. Carl is going to show off his uh, skills. His gazelle <laughs> rustling his, skills. Yeah. His gazelle skills. Uh, and here we're going to start with uh, a camp. So these camps, these are military locations. Uh, he's going to use Senu, right? That's right. Senu. Senu she's is a the, beauty. Yeah, she's a beauty. <laughs> uh, she's a great scout. Uh, so right now, Carl's using her to, to tag the enemies, but also tagging opportunities in the, in the camp. Now, the question might be, why would someone infiltrate such a location uh, outside of quests? So there is a quest that actually takes place here. In the demo, we've disabled the quest so that we can focus on the world and what happens with the world. Mm -hmm. Later on, there's going to be more streams with quests so that 
uh, we can kind of spread the, the, the love, the content. But for now, we're just kind of cutting loose in the open world and exactly. uh, going to see what is in store for us here at this camp. Now, with the tagging, uh, I'm noticing, you know, one of the new features here is that levels are popping up yep. over the enemy's heads as you are tagging. Uh, yes. So uh, what, what can the player read into those levels as to what kind of challenge they're going to face? Yeah, so, so by going a lot more action RPG, uh, what's happening here is that right now Bayek is level 20 and he's facing off against enemies that are at an equivalent challenge. Mm -hmm. And so this would be considered a, a fair, you know, challenge fight in this part of the world. Um, and we'll see that as, uh, we'll, we'll see later on, there's another camp with enemies that are level 25. And you'll see that the feedback's slightly different. This is to really clarify to people, levels matter, gear matters, uh, taking on higher level enemies, it, it's doable. Mm -hmm. But they're tougher not only in stats, but they're also tougher in behavior. So the higher level they are, they have more capacities, more abilities, stronger weapons. So you might want to think twice before taking them exactly. on or get some better gear. Or just light your arrows on fire, yes. apparently. What are you doing there, Carl? I think I'm going to cause a little bonfire down here. Why not? Because it's not hot enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just a little more warmth from the bonfire. Yeah. Speaking of which, my feet are on fire. We are in the middle of the yeah, sun. It is, right it here. is really hot out we here. We suffer for your entertainment <laughs> viewers. Listen, this is the, <laughs> the live streaming equivalent of method acting. Is you know, we Hayek <laughs> is warm right now. You think that hood is like you know yeah. keeping him cool? That that hood is warm. <laughs> and and I will say for the oh God, for the fans line. out there who. Oh, the lion's oh, attacking the horse. Attacking the horse. He's got a snack on well, some horse meat. Well, it is a distraction. Meat. He's Not been caged up for a while. So th that's something that we fully embrace in here. So all the NPCs of the world, all the humans, all the animals, they have a full life in the world. They have needs, they have wants. Uh, animals, uh, you know, they, they hunt, they sleep, they find shade. Uh, so in this case, this lion has been captured and been put in uh, a cage. And at this point, it becomes an opportunity for the player. It, you can't always guarantee it. But um, OK, so these guys are. They sense something. They've seen a lion getting released. They've seen. <laughs> kind of hard to miss that one. <laughs> yeah, a fire. There you go, Carl. Oh, something's going well on. Well, well done. All right. Nice job, Carl. Thank there you. we go. So Gwyneth we just picked away. up a, a bow. So this is something that's really important uh, in uh, in Assassin's Creed Origins. It's gear. Um, oh, <gasps> Goodbye, terrible. lion. Terrible. He was he was so kind to you. Wow. He attacked the horse. He should have been attacking No real horse. lions were harmed. Out of the frying pan demo. into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we picked up a bow, and we saw that it was a, it was oh a blue goodness. bow, which means that it's a common weapon. So mm -hmm. rarities do matter in this game. Yeah. Uh, the more rare uh, the equipment is, the more attributes it has, the more properties it has. So as opposed to just does, does some more damage, it cannot have other properties. Uh, like what is an example? Exactly. So, so other properties could be things like poison tipped. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, be, being able to generate adrenaline. Adrenaline is a, is a concept, uh, it's a resource in the, the combat system that allows uh, Bayek to unleash uh, a fury of attacks or, or just devastating, overpowering attacks. And you can build adrenaline through the combat system. And uh, some weapons charge differently than others, so this is part of the depth of the combat that we want players to, to mess around with. And this is a whole new combat system, you guys. Boom, headshot. It's, it's way different than the, oh. the feeling before of being in a combat. He's dazed. <laughs> Take him up, poor guy, helmet. poor guy. Oh, he's... Ooh, he can cover some ground. So this guy's a commander, that's the, the gold icon. Uh-oh, not for long. There we go, there yeah. We go. Dead. <laughs> so there we go. So killed. So Very here we found a Very second killed. bow. So in a military location, uh, military locations are great for finding equipment mm -hmm. uh, and new gear. Uh, aside from playing quests, these are also places to, to be able to, to upgrade bike with new uh, new weapons. Loot all that. So here we found a bow. Oh, we leveled up, uh, which gives us an ability point. So we'll, we'll check that out in a second. Check it out now. Yeah, and we found a shield. Oh, cool. Nice all job, right, so here we're Carl. looking at sort of the, the skill tree, and uh, I'm seeing three different yeah. branches. Yeah, it's it's more of a graph. Uh, what okay. that means is there are flavors. So on the one side, we, we, what you see here is the, the Master Seer. This is more the abilities that are aligned with uh, manipulation. Mm -hmm. So manipulating the environment, uh, animals, and uh, NPCs. Uh, in the center, we have the warrior aspect, which is really delving deep into fights. And uh, the hunter aspect, which is more the stealthy approach of being an assassin or being a ranger. And the idea is players can dedicate themselves or go through the graph however they want. That's why it's a graph, because they can actually 
uh, kind of spread themselves as they wish. They can really craft their own uh, their own assassin, mm -hmm. uh, and you can even focus on one area if you want to be the absolute ultimate warrior. Yeah, the ultimate, ultimate warrior. warrior. You can you can dedicate yourself. So the last ability on each graph, uh, you can keep pumping points into it, uh, so you can really become that super powerful archetype that you wish to play. You just got to chase down a fluorescent outfit and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> <There we> go. <laughs> so what kind of player would you be, Ash? What's your personal favorite style? Uh, personally, well, we should we should get Carl to, to buy something here. We go for the Enhanced Warrior Bow. Enhanced Warrior Bow. The Warrior Bow is super cool. We haven't seen it yet, so maybe we should switch to it if we can. Yep. We did pick up a few new bows, right? Yeah, yeah we should yeah, check yeah, out the new gear. Check out our gear. Definitely check out the new gear. So uh, in terms of my, my style, I would I would say I'm somewhere between hunter and warrior. I can't choose one or the other. I sometimes prefer stealth, sometimes prefer just duking it out with the guys. Um, that's my style. But that, that's one thing we wanted to cater to is that we have uh, a lot of fans who either play stealth or play uh, pure mm -hmm. combat. It depends and on the mood. we wanted to give them a control over that. Yeah. So here we can see that Carl put on a new bow. Uh, you also had a new shield. Put on the shield, put on the shield. Let's new it. everything. It new bow, new is shield. Is it really going to be better? Let's have a look. Oh, oh, yeah. It's way better. So oh, you can wow. see the, the shield adds to, to the player's resistance. Okay. It was quite significant. And we can see it has a property, which is that um, when you block uh, a hit, you generate adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So the idea yeah. is with gear, you can actually start crafting, again, the way you fight, the way you stealth. We can see the crafting at the bottom there. Uh, so just, just like combat, there's no longer this concept that you can one-shot assassinate just anybody. Mm -hmm. Enemies that are higher level, you'll do stealth damage, but if you want to one-shot them, be that true lethal assassin, you have to craft better hidden blades. You gotta work hard at it. Or, and now we're going for a little boat ride. Yeah. Just yeah, trying to cool down in the sea, which I wish I could do right now, because <laughs> I am on fire. <laughs> Pretty hot. So this is the amazing <laughs> tech Singapore has been working on the water. I think it's some of the most beautiful water in it's any gorgeous. game. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's completely seamless. You, we can at some point we'll dive underneath. For, for now, um, you know we have an island here. Let's maybe at some point explore the island. Well, this lake yeah, is really big. Yeah, can we just get a sort of look at how yeah, sure. how big this is? So great. This is one Take of the a look at this lake. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. You I'm can see the the, the the draw distance are absolutely stunning. Yeah. This is for you folks watching. This is running on the Xbox One X. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it, it's really allowing us to showcase what we can push with our engine, the beauty of the world. We really want to do Egypt justice and 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 show it off. Show off our artists. Show off our, our technical uh, technical people, our programmers who who bring this to life. It's gorgeous. So here we can see some boats in the distance. This uh, this bigger ship here. There's there's always opportunities. The, the world is alive. Mm -hmm. You know, fishermen are out catching fish. They'll take their their goods to to shore, to docks, take them to the markets, go home and sleep at night. And there's always opportunities for the player here. All right, out for a little swim. And you mentioned <laughs> underwater. Uh, let's let's take a little dive. <laughs> okay, let's take sure, a little let's dive. Go down. Take a look. Uh, you know, I there see something dangerous. Off in the horizon there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, what is that? It's a hippo. Oh, man, do we have other He looks creatures? pretty friendly. Let's get closer. <laughs> See what happens. It's a good idea. Very good idea. <laughs> or not. Carl has a great track record with <laughs> animals, so uh, <laughs> nothing could go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but you've, so heard, you've, got... you've heard about his stories from Singapore, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here, so, so Ooh, this is a location. Uh, the reason there's loot here, the question might be, why is there loot here? Uh, the reason there's here is actually this island. Um, it's uh, it's where the Ptolemies, so the the guard force, mm -hmm. they use this island as a way to uh, to stop, to take a break, to to actually refill on some of their stocks. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. And uh, so here we can see there's actually a guard on the other side who's been killed by what? I don't know, but. Maybe the hippo. Not a hippo. No, he, he's a good guy. I <laughs> think we should say a hi. Nice, nice dude. <laughs> he's a nice dude. Oh, I got a spear. You got a spear. Use the spear. Switch to the spear. Okay, let's switch. Yeah, because that's the thing. We've seen sort of that uh, that short curved sword in yeah, action. The yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's there there is a variety of weapons, and the sort of the reach of the longer weapons is going to affect how you are in combat. Exactly. Uh, so so we have uh, a ton of types of weapons. So eight melee weapons, uh, four types of bows, uh, and this is just the types. Then within them, there's levels, attributes, properties, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and of course, it's, it's a completely sim seamless system it's here. We're using the bow in water. You should get in closer, Carl, and see what happens. Like is those an birds, if Carl, if Carl was good, he can shoot those birds down. <laughs> I got other problems right now. Let me deal with this uh, angry beast. They're just trying to say hi. Okay. You know? I, I feel like you're engaging it on its home turf. Like, maybe they're slower on land. You don't want to... Oh, God. And he's using the spear. Oh, no! <laughs> you're smacking the hippo with oh, your spear. Oh, man. Poor hippo. What if it's a mama? Now, you know what? Oh, now you've got him angry. He just wanted to say hi. Oh, I think boy. if it's oh, a mama, boy. Carl's in even more trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Keep he's, circling you're, it. You're vicious, yeah. No hippos were harmed in the making of this demo. No, it's no actual hippos no were actual harmed hippos. in the making of Assassin's Creed. This Creator one's Rogers. being harmed, though. <laughs> there we go. All right, so when you loot a hippo, what are you, what are you gaining from this beast? So... <laughs> <laughs> what was the purpose of this massacre? Did you ever think he would say that sentence yeah. <laughs> in public? Uh, so animals... Uh, so, so the fauna of Egypt... Whoa, is, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just throw that guy off his boat? Yeah. Poor guy. Sorry. So this is... Sorry, buddy. There's a hippo just over there. Careful, huh? You can you'll, use a corpse as a float. You'll this be fine. This is Carl style. This is Carl style. Uh, so... Uh, obviously, Egypt, it's, re it's, it's very well known for its, its fauna, its, its wildlife, and we need it to represent that properly here. Um, and then we have to say, well, it matters to the player on some level. So this is part of the progression system. So you gain materials that you would use to, to craft uh, some of your gear. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so that's... <laughs> oh! oh. You're just a shit no, starter, no, aren't you, Carl? This military, it's all right. These are military dudes. Oh, <laughs> oh put, uh, put He's on, on fire, fire now. On fire. Okay. Ooh, oh, fire on a here. boat. That's uh, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, the fisherman's coming in dangerously. Oh, boy. Is someone else mixing it up over there? There we go. Oh, oh, oh now oh, the boat's no, on fire. That's coming for me, though. He knew that his boat was in trouble. I better leave. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave him to tread water. Yeah. So you know what? If, if the situation was slightly different, I love if Carl how this guy's was, just along for the ride. He's yeah, just in front of you, like, what chilling. is happening? Yeah. <laughs> the guy's just chilling. The thing is, Bayek is a Magi. Mm -hmm. They are protectors of Egypt. Uh, they're protectors of the, the Egyptian way of life. And Egyptians have a high respect for Magi's, and they uh. go to them for help. This is actually feeds into the questing system, actually. So, as a Magi, he respects them. He's going to mm. let him take his boat for a ride. You do you, Bayek. You do you. <laughs> Set boats on fire. I like it too because he's not like obviously the boat's important to that dude. Like it's probably his livelihood. He's like, look, man, you can you can take this wherever you want, but I'm I need it when you're done. <laughs> yeah, just be sure you bring it back. He's chilling for a bit. He'll even wait a bit. Eventually he'll leave, but he'll wait a bit for now. He's watching me, Kevin. So courteous. He's like, so hey, courteous. in case you need a getaway vehicle, I'm here, bro. It's exactly. Cool. Exactly. <laughs> So, so here, this is this is another military camp, but this one's slightly different. This one's a wharf. Uh, here, what we what we wanted to show is just what it's like to take on enemies that are much higher level. So mm -hmm. here, we'll see some guards. So there's some in the front gate there. So level 25, you see that the badge is red, which is kind of telling the player, yes, you can try. You can try. Try your best. You Take one at him. Give it a shot. But it's going to be a very difficult fight because you're you're not at their level just yet. Eventually, with by by going through quests, by completing locations in the world, uh, you will level up enough. So I would recommend just <laughs> yeah, Carl. Trying. Carl, what's your plan here? Are you going to take yeah. on this How are you challenge? Do this? Let's. Oh, this guy's. Oh, he's he looks vulnerable. So let's try a headshot. <laughs> he's alone. Let's try a headshot, see how much damage it does. Oh, goodness, it's not going to do a lot. He's going to swat a fly. Yeah, he is. Oh, he is no. tough. Yeah, oh, no. tough. Just a little scratch. Yeah. Get up on him. All right. Got this. Got the spear. Oh, Working man. it in close quarters. And come on, get him, Carl. Oh, boy, here we go. I believe in you, Carl. You, you can, can take him. He can take him. Honestly, he can do it. Carl, Carl's been practicing. He's very good at the game. Oh goodness! <laughs> yeah, look at that one hit. A, like a stun almost happening. Is that a oh. heavy hit? That I'm oh no! Oh. Oh. Lord. You get enough uh. for effort. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, two hits from me. <laughs> okay. So look, the game is live. This yeah. Is, you know we. This we is take, real gameplay. Exactly. Yeah, we we take uh, you know we take games very seriously in the sense of we. You know, we want this to be the, the representation of the game as it is. We want players to see where it is today. So, yes, in a demo playthrough, Carl died you in front of everybody. You can killed. <laughs> but so I've learned my lesson. You don't have to rub it in, Ash. <laughs> in front of everybody. I've learned my lesson and I'll just keep moving on. The level 25 is too, too high.
Let's yeah. give them a wide berth now. And uh, so you're coming in, you're look, sort of leaving the wharf and coming. Oh, oh hey, buddy. Yeah, so Carl our friend. called for, for his mount. And does this horse have a name? Yes, or is I it a believe, horse with I no believe, name? <laughs> no, I believe uh, <laughs> this horse is uh, named uh, Amun Ray. Amun Ray. So, He's very but, handsome. Um, or she. A beautiful horse. Yeah. Uh, so Senu is, uh, is our eagle companion. Uh, in this case, though, we wanted that mounts was uh, something that the player can actually collect more and more mounts, purchase more and more mounts, and we have many different types of mounts. So there's horses, oh, no many shit. types of beautiful horses, but also camels and eventually chariots. Ooh, uh, camels. Yeah, and they all have their value. And uh, so, so you can actually have different types of horses. Uh, Senu being the, the the eagle companion that stays with you through the journey. Uh, so there we go. So we have. Uh, we have this beautiful black horse here. Does the camel black have stallion. a spit attack? Because I hear they do that. <laughs> a spit attack, no, but I, but you can rear with the horse. You can rear with the horse. The camel... Get the hooves in there. <laughs> so we're sort of skirting the shoreline here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is... You guys have built, as you were saying uh, in the presentation, this is a country, you know? This is not exactly. just one city. So what actually, kind of region are we in? Yeah, actually, before before we go in, so so here we found uh, Umeria, which is, uh, w which is uh, a port village. Um, actually, maybe I'll ask all to, to go to the, the map. Sure. You can go to the map just to kind of give a general spacing of the world. So so we're, so this is the lake that we've seen with Senu. If we keep zooming out, Keep zooming out. This is the this wow. is the the it's aspect enormous. of the demo. The lake is where the demo takes place. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Since we were riding a bit north of it earlier, we started we started around here. Yeah, yeah, that's why that's how we unfog the world by visiting the world. You unfog it, but just to give a breadth of this country that we've built. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, yeah. Move around just to show it's. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. it's it it keeps ginormous. going. Enormous. It's absolutely massive. Up to uh, Alexandria in the north. Yeah, Alexandria. Nice. There's and the Al Giza Delta. Desert, then Al Delta. The Giza Plateau, Memphis, the ancient city of Memphis, and it goes on. Then there's Fayum, uh, Crocodopolis down in the south. Crocodopolis. <laughs> yes, yes. Real Let's, city. I like that place, Thieves Land. Who do you? Th who, what's going on? Does anybody ever go there? Really honest it's people. Like, uh, I no, think no, daring, you don't want to go down. daring players should go there. <laughs> there's a lot of cool stuff in it for them. Uh, so just to give an idea that that we, you know, this is a country. Egypt is. Um, it's such a majestic setting, and we've dreamed of going to this place. And so when we started and we decided we're going to Egypt, we, we understood that it was going to be uh, you know, a labor of love. It was going to push us to develop new technologies, to build such a, a crazy big world. And then to even populate the world with all these people that actually have agendas and purpose. Mm -hmm. For example, these these people over here are being attracted by an event. If, if Carl would look at it. Oh God! Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh, Egypt is hard. Egypt uh, it was a, a tough harsh life. Place. Let's investigate. Priest, what does the boy done to deserve this? This has nothing to do with you. Back away. The boy will get what he deserves. I serve so big. I serve so big. I am a slave. Boy, what are you accused of? I was charged with ferrying two gold sobeks to Crocodilopolis. Just out of port, my ship sank by the lighthouse. I almost drowned. The statues were lost. I didn't steal them. Silence! And you, step back, Sahedi! Wait, do not threaten me, Neb. I am a Magi. If the boy speaks the truth, I will find your gold sobeks. If he lies, he is yours to deal with. So here we we got a little a bit of a taste of, of Bike's personality mm -hmm. and his attitude towards these masked masked priests that abuse their power. And this is a, a side quest. So uh, our players can expect uh, this this type of quality, you know, cinematics, great characters uh, in the optional content in the side quest. And we we have hundreds of stories to tell. Egypt was a, a really wonderful place. Then we found so much amazing stories that we wanted a way to be able to tell them, and the quest structure allowed us to do that. But Very again, cool. we're saving the quest stuff for, for other streams, for, for YouTubers out there. So uh, so for now, we'll continue with uh, playing Our through the world. open world shenanigans. Yeah, uh, if you folks are just joining us, we're playing Assassin's Creed Origins on the Xbox One X uh, with Ash and Carl from the uh, Assassin's Creed Origins dev team. I'm Chris, this is Hanny, and uh, we'll be doing this for about 10 more minutes, so stick around. We've got plenty of open world uh, stuff to show you and some explorations here as Senu scouts out some more locations. So, She's a good girl. So here, actually, I'm going to ask Carl to not stealth this one. Uh, 
the reason we're showing these different locations, different camps and warps, is actually we wanted to show a bit of stealth, we want to show a bit of fight, so I'm going to ask Carl... All right, well, to, what, what do we got in our to arsenal this here? One. He needs to earn some redemption. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. He needs to this earn time redemption. win this uh, one, Carl. Okay, okay, let's give it a try. For the okay, last. here I come, out the bushes. Are you going in with the spear? Uh, I'll just shoot him in the chest first to wake him up. <laughs> Good wake up call. There we go. Wake nice. Okay, all right, all right. Nice dodge. Come on, call. Redeem yourself. Boom. Nice job so far. At some point, yes. just to show the... the One more the, hit and he's dead. <laughs> the yes. versatility yes. of the fight. We can... You can take out your bow. There we go, dynamically in the nice. fight. Headshot. Oh, oh my headshot. God, that's Bravo. Bravo. Huge. Bravo. All right, now, is he close to filling up his adrenaline oh, meter here? Yes. He seems like that might it's, be helpful. It's getting there. It's getting there. I'll try and use it on the big dude. Please. He is humongous. There we go. Okay, just, just get in there. Unleash. There we go. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go. We're see Carl. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, oh man. yeah. Yes. Vicious. Nice. Vicious. Impaled. Very good. Very good. <laughs> that was. Oh, you beautiful. done good, Carl. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, Through the throat that time. Nice. <laughs> nice job, Carl. You killed thank it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, give us a little broader context. Who are these dudes that Bayek is uh, dispatching with such yeah. a gnash? So, so, this is. We're, we're in, the, in the era of the Ptolemies. So, these are Ptolemaic guards. Um, they, they work for the people that Bayek is, is, is going after. And when I say going after, effectively, Bayek is unraveling a mystery. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know who, who these characters are that he's after. And so he comes to this place. He's actually looking for a contact to gain some info to lead him to eventually uh, his targets. And these are the Ptolemy guards who, fo who work for these people. Uh, Bayek, being an, an Egyptian, uh, uh, a Medjai, mm -hmm. he doesn't have a very good alignment with these people. Uh, I'll they say. represent, uh, <laughs> yes, they represent really uh, like the evil forces no. that are destroying his homeland. Uh, so, it's anyway, so uh, these are the people he's after. This area of the world, just to say, if we take a look around, yeah, Carl, this is a beautiful shot Let's of the, get, the world. Carl, give us a slow pan here. So, yeah. this is, this is well, the. Actually, there's, a, there's a reach high point, so we can get a better view from there. Yeah, so All we're right. going to do a, a viewpoint. A viewpoint. We'll do now the viewpoint. Just for a sec, we're seeing, uh, you know, some serious climbing here. A hallmark of the Assassin's Creed franchise, but that rock didn't have any, like, obvious hand holds on it. Like, what's the approach to climbing in Origins? Uh, so the climbing, actually, before before we, we synchronize, just to look around. So pretty. Uh, so the climbing in Origins, it's... Um, uh, so, so first, we've revamped the controls. Uh, the fluidity of the character. Uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback already from the people who've played the build that, that feel like the assassin is really responsive, listening to them, doing what they want. Mm -hmm. And we pushed that to the climbing where we said, you know what, uh, we should be able to climb any surface we want. So, so we've created a tech for, for, for bike when he's climbing to be able to put his hands and footholds into crevices and so on on any surface. Uh, so effectively to be able to climb anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted, you know, uh, as, as the most seamless experience that we can have. Here you can see the world is absolutely beautiful. See that all, that distance, that top peak in the distance? You know, we could just go there at some point if we wish to. Uh, swimming by boat, by camel, whatever. And, we, and there's three. secrets up there for us. There's really I cool love stuff. secrets. There's really cool <laughs> discoveries um, to find. Here, why don't, why don't we synchronize? So here, the world is, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, kudos to our artists, our engineers. Our technical so artists, um, you know, this this world is something. Absolutely, and you know, so synchronizing, you know, historically is sort of a way to learn more about an area, sort of clear the fog from an area. Yeah. But you mentioned earlier, the fog clears by you just you just traveling through the area. Yeah, exactly. So we wanted to keep the idea of the we wanted to keep the the viewpoints mm -hmm. uh, as an homage to to the series. Leap of uh, faith, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Maybe we can explore a bit, walk through yeah. area a little bit, just to give a flavor of the, the village life. Villages are great places to to pick up quests, mm -hmm. to, to go to shops, to... Uh, and, and obviously there are many quests inside villages. Uh, these are hubs of content. Um, but anyway, so... Oh, we're actually we're in a red zone right now. Uh-oh. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, well, now sure it's the <laughs> fleeing technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, I'd recommend fleeing, maybe. Or you can fight. Or you can fight. He's feeling strong from his last encounter. Yeah. Yep. He's digging that. Spirit. Real confident. Mixing, uh, melee and now we're sort of we're busting out the warrior's bow here. That was a skill we unlocked earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good point, switch, good point. Switch the warrior bow. So the warrior bow, it's effectively oh, our... Shit. 
yeah, our shotgun bow. He shoots five arrows at once. There we go. Oh, oh my god, uh, deadly. Bravo. Beautiful. Very efficient. It shoots five arrows at once. Uh, so when we talk about attributes and properties, you can actually find bows that you can actually have more arrows on them. You can set them on fire by default. Mm -hmm. um, so this this actual this compound here, it's actually part of uh, part of a quest. Uh, don't want to ruin the quest for people, but this is somebody's home that's been uh, let's say uh, confiscated, and uh, Bayek will eventually uh, have to have to help those people. Oh, it's a porcupine. That's. <laughs> That's a lot of arrows, but you can recover. It looks like you're recovering. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, you can pick up your arrows. Uh, that, that, and that ranged that combat, that with? focus on sort of, uh, you know, assassins have had ranged weapons in the past before, yeah. but with the bows in Origins, you guys are really trying to expand that. Yeah, yeah, we, we, it, it's a, it's a full-blown third-person shooter on that element. It's, um, we, we really wanted that the playstyles we push, so range combat, melee, stealth. That this stuff uh, feels authentic, and if you just want to focus on that, that the game will fully support it and will go deep into that. So, so we've really pushed ourselves to to develop these gameplays. Uh, the shooting feels great. The bows feel amazing, uh, and there's a bunch of bows we haven't shown. There's the predator bow, which is kind of like a sniper. Uh, a can kitty. we talk about yes, the cat? A little oh my kitty. God! There's, there's a cat. cat. <laughs> This is such a great way to wrap this up. Like, we just saw a cat in ancient Egypt. Come on, in ancient guys. Egypt, more, and, and you know what? Want. Cats are very important can in ancient Egypt. Can you pet it? So, so here, look. <laughs> so see? OK, look. So systemically, you know, as I said, animals really oh, live in this world. Oh mm -hmm. And so this cat has, for some reason, an affection towards bias. He loves you. <laughs> or she. Or she's sticking around. Reciprocate. Oh, look at, oh look at She loves them. She loves them. <laughs> Carl, as, as I said, we've, yeah. we've put a lot of effort on, on animals and their needs and what they do in the world. <laughs> yeah. I love that she appeared near the end of this stream. This it's is a amazing. Fantastic yeah. moment. Yes. Cool. Ash, this has been so great. Carl, thank you for showing off the game. Uh, there's a lot more to come this yeah. week, and uh, but it must be really exciting for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a long journey for us. It's absolutely wonderful to, to be able to show off the game and, and have people play it, get their feedback, uh, see their excitement. Uh, I'm super, super proud of the team and, and w what we've achieved. Um, kudos to, to the Singapore team, to the Montreal team, to all the, all the teams that are working on this game uh, all over the world with many people supporting us. Um, it's, it's a really wonderful, exciting time for us, and I can't wait for our, our fans to, to play this. Absolutely, and they'll get to play it uh, at E3 here, but yes. uh, later this year, October 27th is October, the release date. Yes, October 27th, so October 27th on PS4 Pro, PS4, Xbox, PC, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, a launch title for Xbox One X. Fantastic. Well, if you folks want more Assassin's Creed Origins here at E3, there's going to be streams. Keep it tuned to Ubisoft's social channels to find out when and where those are. If you want more Assassin's Creed right now, you can head to the Ubisoft YouTube channel and check out the behind-the-scenes video from the UB blog. And uh, for all the awesome games here revealed during that incredible conference, yeah. Ubisoft.com, that's where it's at. So on behalf of Hanny, Carl, Ash, I'm Chris Waters, thanking all of you for watching, and have a great week. Peace. Thank you. Have a great E3.